So I wanted to today a bit of um, thinking about variational quantum algorithms. A bit of um, I don't know how to I don't know how to call it, but a bit of a uh, there's a word for this in English for sure, but I forgot. A bit of reflecting. Oh yeah, that's that's probably the right word. So I want to do a bit of reflecting about variational algorithms. Um, cause I kind of had this, uh, this feeling last time when I checked that, that, um, it's all really nice and, and, and all that stuff, but, uh, it's at the end of the day, that's, uh, it feels simple, right. From a, from a principal perspective and intuitively, I mean, I'm not saying that it's easy to prove those things are correct and work and whatnot. I mean, I guess there's all the stuff that needs, I mean, those, all those things come from all these theories and whatnot, but um, it kind of feels like if I look at the circuit, to be honest, it's, um, so we can get the, so it's a, um, you're doing stuff, you're computing things on, uh, so your cost Hamiltonian or a cost function uh, on the Z act, on, on the Z dimension. And then you're applying a mixer that basically what it does is it kind of moves into the amplitudes realm. And so um, I kind of think that essentially what would these do is that the elements where you've got like a higher Let's see if we can draw this somehow. Do I have this plugged in here or not? So let's see. Is this painting? Is this painting? Painting, painting, painting. Yes. So if uh, if I've got a really beautiful block sphere, or let's say this is this is my Z, and then this is. So this is this is my z and this is the uh, y and this is the x axis, right? And if I'm kind of so this is x, this is z, and this is y. And so the more I'm phasing stuff in this direction, right? When I will do a um, when I will do uh, I'm just talking about a qubit right now. Right, so I don't know if that easily ports into um, multiple qubits, but the idea is that uh, the probabilities will, but to be honest, if you're in the plus direction or in the minus direction, it shouldn't make a difference, right? Unless you're using the Hadamard as your uh, mixer function, because that's what makes a difference and takes you down to down to one or or up to zero. If I open Quirk for a second, uh, so if I just do, let's say I just go to, uh, let's say that I just uh, go to uh, the Hadamard. Uh, so to the, to the plus minus wall and I apply a bunch of Z. Um, let's say I apply like T and, and, and another T and kind of another T here. So certain states, certain states have more phase than others, right? This state is 135, 135. This state is 45, 45, 90 degrees, zero degrees. If I now apply a mixer, a simple mixer of say, um, and, I, and I haven't really done a full 180 degrees rotation in any case, right? But if I apply a single mixing layer like these, so what is it doing? So it's it's giving me the probabilities of. Okay. 
yeah, I mean, whatever, it's giving me some sort of solutions with more probabilities than others, right? Whether this is what I want or not, that's another thing. But that's kind of what, that, that's, at an abstract level, you shouldn't care about these things. So what, what, what this computation gives you in the realm of amplitudes is these, right? And so if I, if I, If I go and now I say uh, that I want to add more T's here, how is that changing the game? Okay, so there, the more we add, the more, you know, <laughs> it's a nice animation. Um, and now I have a lot to remove though. The point is, the more we rotate, the, the more these changes, right? And, and, and these is kind of, you think of these as your solution space. Mm. And in the case of the phases, it doesn't really matter where this phase is added, right? Like if I, let's copy these just so we can go back to this. But if I do one, two, three, it takes me these, right? It takes me to this state in here. If I go, oh no, that's not where I want to go. Sorry. If I do uh, one, two, three, okay, and that's different. Yeah, sure, it makes sense. That's different because we're in superposition. Yeah, 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 that's different. But it takes me to a bunch of different. So if I change these to be sort of a, a bit of a different rotation, I'm getting different. So what I'm trying to play with here is just, you know, basically as you, kind of trying to do, uh, pretend that those are different angles and whatnot, um, so that I'm doing a, a different mixer in here. But that's the idea. You, you go from one realm to another. You go from one from the realm of the phases where you're calculating your cost to a realm of amplitudes, and it's kind of those things do not commute. And you know, for some reason, you just gotta believe these kind of can, in theory, allow you to approximate anything. Now, in this particular case. What is this supposed to find you though? It's supposed to find a solution. If you find a solution that minimizes these, it means you've got a solution. So if you find a solution that minimizes the expectation value here, that means you're minimizing really the expectation value of your cost Hamiltonian. That's it, right? I think that's I think that's the whole point of this. But really, I mean, I just don't feel the magic behind these. Kind of don't feel the magic behind these a lot, um, and I feel a bit bad about this because this plenty of work that people have put behind this, but I just feel I can't appreciate somehow the the beauty of, of variational algorithms. What other variational algorithms are there? Is HHL very variational? I have never approached HHL. Is it variational? Carl uh, Lindley's discussion in 2009, the algorithm estimates the result of a scalar measurement and social factor in the linear system. Is it variational? Variational. It doesn't seem like. What's, where's the circuit? HHL circuit. So there's a circuit in here. Clock register, input register, and seal register, phase estimation, some rotation and uncompute. Uh, 
load phase estimation eigenvalue in version phase estimation no that's not what is this f of x though but that's not um there is keep you keep e but it's not variational so what are the variation algorithms are there quantum algorithms i mean really the only so the, the only difference between between these and vqe right is that this is a specific so this is a specific recipe for saying you know just compute your cost in one dimension mix it up like use a mixer to kind of move from the realm of and the only reason we're doing this is because we we are working on this on a on the superposition world that's the only reason we're doing that 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 kind of allows us to calculate staff in parallel so to say for all the possible elements of your superposition and so what what the mixer is then just saying is that give me give me turn that into you know let's go back to the amplitude world and give me a representation of what it means of of like, give me a representation of what in general this cost means for my problem if i'm assuming that what i have here as an input is my problem input right it's it's the it's a superposition with my with, with sort of the the, the the stuff that i use as an input um I'm applying these and then I'm just saying just just tell me give me what's the footprint of this cost for this particular or give me what's the footprint for but then what's variational here really is the cost for is the cost variational or is these variational in QAOA I think the cost is variational, right? As well. I think so. I think those tens and whatnot. No, but those are the weights of the graph. That's why I have 0.5 and 0.5, minus 1. So are you saying the cost is not variational in here? Okay, that's a bit confusing. But the idea is these basically, right? So you've got a cost function and then you, yeah. And so what, what VQE really is, is, is a more general, it's a more general idea where you've got the concept of a nonsense, which is nothing else than your actual circuit in here. Um, and so you're trying to find you're just trying to find the lowest eigenstate, eigenvalue of the, the, the matrix representation or the matrix that 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 circuit represents. And so, because you have, if you take a general Hamiltonian, you can't just, you know, um, I'm not an expert in Hamiltonians, but uh, I, if I understand this well, the idea is that well, the Hamiltonian can be can be complicated, and so you might need to decompose these in terms of the x, the y, and the z dimensions or the poly operators, and so that kind of basically tells you, you know, that you you have to have separate circuits for each of those components, and then you'll just need to add up those things. So it's just a, but it's the same concept. Uh, make a circuit apply a classical optimization of parameters in there that kind of takes into a minimization of you know whatever you're you're measuring in the case of the vqe your cost function i mean the ansatz what you're minimizing is the actual expectation value of your ansatz because that's just the way the eigenvalues and the eigen stuff is defined from a matrix perspective 
I think that's it. And then, so the QAO is a really specific case of these. Mm. But what are other variational algorithms, really? Uh, variational quantum algorithms. So this is some stuff in here, variational. Hybrid, variational. Because it's almost, it almost feels like there's a, f a huge family of things behind this, but I've only heard about VQE, QAOA. Um, no, no, wait a second. There's this variational quantum thermalizer, right? That I think I think Guillaume is involved in that quantum thermalizer. How is that different? EQT. Okay, so how is that? Okay, so how, is that the paper? Yeah, that's from Guillaume Verdon. I'm sorry for your name. Uh, be badly pronounced. What's the circuit here? So is this anyhow different? That's my first question. So we introduced new class of gener generative, qu generative quantum neural network based models called quantum Hamiltonian based models. Oh, um, you know, in, in doing so, we establish a paradigmatic approach for quantum probabilistic hybrid variational learning. Okay, quantum probabilistic hybrid variational lear variational learning, where efficiently decompose the tasks of learning classical and quantum correlations in a way which maximizes both utility. Of course, we're going to present the addition to the version of quantum thermalizer for generating the thermal state of a given Hamiltonian and target temperature, a task for which QHBMs are naturally well suited. The VQT can be seen as a generalization of the VQE. Okay, so this is a generalization of VQE. How can you get more general than that? I don't know. Um, we show that the VQT converges to the VQE in the zero temperature limit. Um, we provide numerical results demonstrating the efficacy of, of efficacy of these techniques. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to go through all the paper uh, right now on Spark because I'm not. I don't have so much time. But I just wanted to kind of, as I said in the beginning of the video, do a bit of a kind of just a bit, take a bit of a mental break and and think just well about variational quantum algorithms in general. But it seems okay. So this is uh, there's a bit of an introduction in here: quantum simulation, enhanced optimization. Quantum Hamiltonian base models. This was constructed as thermal states, quantum exponential distributions of a parameterized modular Hamiltonian as the first set of applications for these class models to explore the learning of unknown quantum mixed states. So, is this still part of the introduction? In discriminative machine learning models, the model learns the conditional probability of target Y given the observation. In order to represent the hybrid quantum classical statistics of mixed states, the QHBM ansatz is structured in terms of a simple, nearly classical, parameterized, latent mixed state, which is passed through a unitary quantum neural network to produce a visible mixed state. The general framework. Okay. So this is. Preparation of a simple from a quantum computational standpoint. Quantum correlations are incorporated through the unitary with model parameters. Modular Hamiltonians and the exponential ansatz. So we're getting more abstract than VQ. Can we do that? <laughs> will distinguish two distinct tasks within the QHBM framework. The first is generative uh, learning of entire mixed state. Okay, I think I, I think I want to do that. I think I definitely want to deep, deep into this. Maybe that's going to help me fall in love with variational algorithms. Maybe. Quantum generative modeling of mixed and thermal states. Is there a circuit in the paper? I mean, other than that, of course. Quantum solution and of thermal states. Variational quantum thermalizer for the 2D Heisenberg model, applications and experiments. 
target VKT reconstruction. Pardon compression codes. What is this? Training loss. Feature work. That's a hell of a paper. It's a hell of a paper. But I almost feel like that makes sense. Going to this generalization of how can you be more general than VQE? That's crazy. So it's a quantum Hamiltonian based models. Probabilistic hybrid machine learning introduces a class of models called quantum Hamiltonian based models. These models are constructed as, as, as are constructed as More specifically, in this paper, we focus on the task of generative modeling of mixed quantum states. So we want to model mixed quantum states. A mixed quantum state is a quantum state where we just don't know really in which state we are, right? It, it, it's, it's a probability distribution of the quantum states in which we can be. So this is the perfect representation of stuff like a system with noise, right? Because noise adds that uncertainty in the system. It is generally accepted that one must employ a quantum-based representation to efficiently learn the quantum correlations of a pure quantum state, as classical representations of quantum states scale poorly in the presence of quantum correlations such as entanglement. Uh, mixed quantum states arising from probabilistic mixtures of pure quantum states generally exhibit both classical and quantum correlations. One must therefore learn a hybrid, uh, that's interesting, a hybridized representation of featuring both quantum correlations and classical correlations. Within the new paradigm, the quantum probabilistic hybrid machine learning, we introduce a class of models called quantum machine Hamilton, no, quantum Hamilton-based models. These models are constructed as thermal states, quantum exponential distributions, I don't know what that means, of a parametrized modular Hamiltonian. What is a parametrized one? As a first set of applications for this class of models, we explore the learning of unknown quantum mixed states. Okay, so we so the paper focuses on learning unknown quantum mixed states given access to several copies. Ah, okay. So you've got the idea is you've got copies, quantum samples of this quantum probabilistic distribution, and then you try to learn what the mixed state is. As a second class of applications for QHBM, we consider the task of generating the thermal state of a quantum system given knowledge of the system's Hamiltonian. Okay, so in the thermal state of a quantum system, what is a thermal state? Thermal state of a quantum I'm going to be on the quest of um, falling in love with variational quantum algorithms. Um, temperature and thermal state. Thermal state of quantum system. Thermal state of quantum system. Media. Quantum thermodynamics. Uh, thermal state. I guess that's more about quantum mechanics, what matter. Quantum Gibbs states. That's another paper. And this kind of grows in a second class. Okay, before proceeding with the main body of the paper, let's establish your broader context from the point of view of classical machine learning. The field of machine learning is so our back to this in recent years. Okay, so there's a bit of machine learning here. Training and supervised training, blah blah blah. And so, okay, but I probably want to read through these. Uh, The generalized form of an energy-based model has been gaining traction in the classical machine learning community. This new architecture that I have as early support of machines has been shown to be competitive with GANs and VAEs for generative tasks at large scales. 
you know, Troy stores the inspiration from distributions of kinetic physics, namely therm thermal exponential distributions, where the probability of a given sample is proportional to the exponential of a certain function called the energy. Okay, so this is a certain type of probabilities. So I kind of assumed from that to understand that the thermal state is something that's probabilistically defined is it? In, in, in this probability distribution of the quantum of, of the thermal state, of the thermal whatever of the quantum thing. It's uh, the exponential of a function. Modular Hamiltonians and the exponential ansatz. Okay, I I, sh I didn't want to be getting into these right now because I don't have yeah I probably don't over time anyway so but I'll I might get into these uh because I'm curious to see where this takes me in the world of variational algorithms but if you know of any other variational algorithms that are worth exploring let me know because I'm definitely willing to go beyond what VQE and QAOA offer. Um, see if uh, that helps me understand a bit more the beauty of this world. Quantum generative modeling. Yeah. Anyway. Simulation of thermal states. Free energy version principle behind it is the version of quantum argon solver. This will be the hard measures task. QHBM is actually a model, it's not an algorithm, it's a model. VQT is an algorithm that is an abstraction of, or that is sort of a generalization of VQE. There's some applications and experiments. So this is a Hamiltonian, which is exponential. The Latin ansatz. Okay, so this is the ansatz. There seems to be no circular. That's that's straight straight away math. But let's 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 try to approach this in the next video. I'm feeling like stepping into the variational world for the next for the next um, for the next videos as well. Um, I know I'm still doing other stuff, but that's definitely something interesting to take a look at. Perfect. See you.